Okay, so when you download files from the internet, very often the files are not going to be in a usable format. In this case, we're looking at something to make a bangle with. Your first thing is to understand your scaling. All right, so a bangle, like this kind of bangle, would most likely have a eight millimeter chain or, or something like that. It's generally speaking going to be a gents bangle. Uh, sometimes they have leather coming out the back, in which case it would be eight to 10 millimeters, uh, or a chain, like something like a, like a, like a, uh, a double Franco. So let's get it oriented correctly first, and let's have a look at some of our dimensions. So this entire hollow in the back is tiny. It's way too small, right? I mean, this entire thing from side to side is less than 10 millimeters. So the internal cavity over here is looking like six mil. Let's go see if we can see in our ghosted mode what we're doing. So always, first of all, mm, that's not going to work for me. So I guess let's see if we can take an align dimension from here. So let's take a dimension, take an align dimension from, let's snap to a vertex there, and let's snap to a vertex there, and then pull it out. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at <laughs> three millimeters, all right? So nobody's buying a chain that's three millimeters. So grab both those things together, all right, and you do a scale. So scale from zero, we're looking to get to about eight millimeters inside there. What's that give us? A little bit more. Uh, so run the command again from zero, scale a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to get you close enough there. So that's your first thing. Make sure that your scaling of the file that you bought is accurate to what you need. Okay. Then features that you thought were going to be way too small suddenly are thick enough. All right, so that's the first kind of thing you ought to get past. The next thing is very frequently the files are going to have file errors. They're going to have all kinds of problems going on with them. You see over here, like these kind of gaps going on, uh, little things over there. There's a variety of ways to fix this. My, uh, my favorite way is to use Mesh Mixer. So I'd grab this thing, uh, would export it at the correct scale. All right, so I'm going to export this. As you can see, I've done one already. I'm going to export it as STL Dragon again, um, just to show you what I'm doing. So export it as an STL file. Uh, then open Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer you can download for free on the internet. It doesn't cost a cent. In Mesh Mixer, go to Import, grab your Dragon. So sorry, I have a lot of folders going on on this computer. Uh, STL Dragon would be this guy. Let's open it up. All right, so I'm just going to move this off the side. This item is also a bunch of different meshes, which will cause problems for production. All right, so uh, the quick cheat way to get this going is you do a solidify in Mesh Mixer. So in Mesh Mixer, go to File. Oh, sorry, not to File. Go to uh, Analysis. Or go to Edit. My apologies. Go to Edit and go to Make Solid. All right. Make Solid will pop open. It's going to look ugly for now, just bear with me. Uh, it's going to open up a bunch of options. I like to use the accurate option. I like to make the solid accuracy 1024. For jewelry, that's a good solid accuracy. All right. Actually, I think it would even be tighter than that. That's 34 micron accuracy to the original model. The mesh density I like to put all the way to the top. Uh, all right, so your offset distance. If you were making something, so let's just update that like that for now. Um, you will quite often find that things that are drawn by artists to look good in renders are not really good for manufacturing the parts or the components might be a little bit thin, all right? Um, so you can actually add an offset thickness. Be aware it does detract from the model just a little bit. It makes the model look a little bit blended, but it will add thickness, all right? So let this finish. Uh, what I might do, okay, this is going to go for a while. If you just want to listen to my voice droning, otherwise I might pause for a second. I'll pause and come back when this is done. No, oh, it's just about done, okay. Um, so this is now one solid mesh. It's cleaned up all those problems, but our issue is still in some places, if you were going to try print and cast this, some of these components are really thin. You know, if you look over here, they're really thin. So if we're okay to sacrifice a little bit of fidelity, in other words, make this thing look a little bit blended, you're able to do an offset distance in here. And you don't need much of an offset distance. If I go 0.15 as an offset distance inside here, okay? Um, or you don't need to use an offset distance. You can either also say that I need a minimum casting thickness would be 0 0.4. So if I leave that, so you need is uh, for, for, for casting, you need a minimum distance of 0 0.4. Let's update that. I'm going to pause this time while it's doing it. 
normally you you know what you're doing when you come in here. I'm just trying to show you the different passes. So I'm going to pause. I'll come back when that's done. Uh, okay, so apologies. Um, I got a little bit busy at work. There. So what we did over here is I first tried with the min thickness of 0 0.4. I didn't like that. So I put an offset distance of 0 0.2. And you can see what it did is previously all these were little loose things that weren't touching each other. You've lost a little bit of definition in the eye, you know, and you used to have little fine details here. But generally speaking, once you scale this back to 10 mil, you've now got a nice solid item. All right, this thing is good for print. I'm gonna stick it in for wax for tomorrow. Um, at this point, to get it out of, um, to get it out of here, uh, you, you just accept this, all right? It would uh, drop you back at the, the Mesh Mixer interface. Then you go to File and you go to Export. All right, and then I've done this before, but I'll do it again. Uh, new Dragon, so give it a new name, save. If you want to check your thicknesses, there's a quick trick. It happens a lot faster than, um, than uh, Rhino, is you can check thicknesses in Blender, but I'm not going to get through that now. I've done this before for our team, and I know that these parts are now all thick enough for uh, casting. All right, so we've got, this is the original one. I'm going to move it over just a little bit like that, and then I'll import the new one. New dragon, there she is. Um, I didn't decimate that dragon, so it's going to be an enormous mesh. Anyway, we just run with it. Um, yeah, I would recommend those of you who know what I'm talking about to do a decimation. All right, so here was your original item that had all kinds of very thin items in it, and it was too thin for cast, and it had like all these tiny little details that weren't going to survive. And then here's the new version. Can see you've lost the super fine detail but you've got a nice beard now that for sure will survive jewelers fat hands busy engraving and cleaning and polishing um, all right so someone on the group asked me to do a video for this and uh, mate I'm happy to help you out so this is now one file there's no errors with it there's no issues the thicknesses are more than ample to cast and that should give you a entry hole for eight millimeter chain or a bracelet what I'll also do is I'll upload this file uh, into Young Jewelers for you. All right, matey. Thanks. I hope that helped.